The Valley of the Queens is another ideal place to appreciate the art of ancient Egyptian tomb murals from the New Kingdom period after the famous Valley of the Kings in Luxor. From the literal interpretation, we can tell that this is the valley where the queen is buried. But in fact, in addition to the queens, members of the royal family including princesses and princes are also buried here. In ancient times was called Ta Set Neferu, a phrase that can mean the place of beauty and also the place of royal children and wives. After the Arab occupation of Egypt, the small valley was called Wadi al Malakat in Arabic. Wadi means dry river valley, while Malakat usually means possessions, including slaves, women, and children. Before the application of modern law, women and children in many traditional societies were indeed regarded as the possessions of their master and the family. From Ta Set Neferu in the ancient Egyptian era to Wadi al Malakat in the Arab era, the names of women and children at different times reflect the changes in their social status. From an aerial perspective, you'll see that this tiny valley is actually a U-shaped wadi that curves to the southwest. Rugged limestone cliffs jut upward, their strata turning and twisting in dramatic contrast to the horizon wall beds of other hills in the west bank. There is a small cave at the base of these cliffs and when it rained, water would pour into it and then flow through the valley. Some Egyptologists had believe it was this feature that caused the valley to be selected for royal burials. The cave represents the womb of Hathor, the U-shaped wadi refers to the horn of the celestial cow, and water means fertility. Burial here would buy a physical symbol of rebirth in the afterlife. Here I share an exclusive opinion of my own. From the angle taken in the photo below, it can be clearly identified that the core mountain of Queen's Valley resembles a female genitalia. This is the most likely reason it was chosen as the Valley of the Queens. You have to know that flying drones in Egypt is illegal, and the West Bank of Luxor is heavily guarded. I'm so lucky to get this photo and reveal the secret of the Valley of the Queens with you. If you take a look at it from the ground, the valley's floor rises only slightly and is covered with undulating hillocks into which tomb entrances could easily be dug. About 90 tombs have been located in the valley, some of them simple pit, others with corridors along a straight or L-shaped axis with small side chambers. A few, mostly from the reign of Ramesses II, have pillared halls, stairways as well as corridors, and large burial chambers. Those of Dynasty 20 are more like the smaller, late New Kingdom tombs in the Valley of the Kings, nearly level corridors, with an occasional side chamber, leading to a small, rectangular burial chamber. The three tombs in the Valley of the Queens that are open today are of the latter type. Speaking of which, you may be wondering why the Valley of the Queens has more than 90 tombs, far exceeding the Valley of the Kings with 62 tombs in total, but why only four are open to tourists. In fact, at least 10 tombs out of more than 90, begun in the Valley were never finished, probably because poor Kualili Bedrock forced workmen to rethink their plans. That same poor stone meant that heavy layers of plaster had to be applied before walls could be decorated. Some of it fell of its own weight over time, more was destroyed by occasional flash floods. Well over 60% of the tombs known today are anonymous because such damage has erased evidence of names or titles. After you enter the Valley of the Queens from the parking lot, the broken walls of a Coptic Christian monastery called Der Rumi built in the 4th century AD can be seen to the west. Excavation of the Valley of the Queens was undertaken by Ernesto Schiaparelli of the Egyptian Museum in Turin between 1903 and 1906. The archaeological camp where his team was stationed was just south of the ruins of this Coptic Christian monastery. His work was highly successful and most of the named tombs we know today, including the famous tomb of Queen Nefertari, were discovered by him and his team. You can visit three tombs in the Valley of the Queens with a normal ticket. These three tombs were built during the reign of Ramses III in the 20th dynasty of the New Kingdom. They are similar in content and style. While their simple architectural and decoration offer an interesting contrast to tombs with the intricate layout in the Valley of the Kings and heavily decorated tombs of the nobles and craftsmen. I usually recommend that tourists visit the Valley of the Queens firstly before heading to the Valley of the Kings. They are the entry-level attractions to appreciate the art of tomb murals from the 20th dynasty of the New Kingdom period. However, if you rush to the next scenic spot after visiting the three tombs in the Valley of the Queens, you are like 99% of tourists, passing by the most astonishing tombs in the entire West Bank. This tomb is QV66, the tomb of Nefertari. Nefertari was the Grand Queen of Ramses II, the most famous pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of the New Kingdom. Although it had been looted by tomb raiders centuries earlier, 
Everything was stolen, except for the knees of the Nefertari's mommy. But the amazing bar-relief murals in the tomb were fortunately preserved. They are one of the greatest artistic achievements of ancient Egypt and have been considered by many to be the Mosul beautifully painted tomb in all of Egypt. Thus, enjoy the fame of ancient Egypt's Sistine Chapel. These murals depict Nefertari's journey to the afterlife and the spells from the Book of the Dead. The color of green, red, yellow ochre and Egyptian blue were used in abundance regardless of their costs, giving the entire tomb an unparalleled beauty. Almost every tourist who steps into the tomb can't help but let out a wow. The next reaction is that they can't believe that such bright and colorful murals are actually the works from 3,200 years ago. They obviously look like they were only completed yesterday. Sadly, not everyone has the opportunity to witness this unique art treasure of ancient Egypt. QV-66, Nefertari's tomb was discovered in 1904. During the Golden Age before the First World War and between the two world wars, a large number of European and American celebrities and wealthy businessmen traveled to Egypt for their interest in antiquity. The tomb of Nefertari in the Valley of the Queens and that of Seti in the Valley of the Kings were the most sought-after attractions at the time for their exquisite burial murals. In 1952, the Muhammad Ali dynasty in Egypt was overthrown by the Free Officers' Organization. Unsettled times and deteriorating relations with Britain and France have led to a depression in the tourism industry. From the perspective of the preservation of the tomb murals, Nefertari's tomb has been closed to the public since the 1950s. Beginning in 1988, the Guinea Conservation Institute in California took a project which lasted for seven years for the maintenance and reinforcement works as improvement on U.S.-Egypt relations. In 1995, the tomb of Nefertari finally reopened to tourists after being closed for nearly half a century. But up to 480 permits were issued per day. The problem is plaster. KV-66 was cut into a low-lying section of the Valley of the Queens where the bedrock is very friable. Unable to create a smooth surface, ancient artisans were forced to cover the rough-hewn walls with a thick layer of plaster before applying painted decoration. But the weight of this plaster and the tendency for it to separate from the bedrock has caused the plaster to buckle. With no support from the stone behind, the plaster threatens to fall to the floor. The Getty Conservation Institute managed to slow the rate Omicron F buckling, but they could not completely stop it. Scientists have estimated that 480 people visiting a tomb over 8 hours leave 15.4 liters of water in its walls. And such humidity level hastens the process of destruction, therefore, QV-66 was closed to tourists again in 2003 due to concerns of its protection. The Jasmine Revolution in 2013 unexpectedly brought a turning point for the reopening of the tomb. To boost tourism, which was depressed by the revolution, the tombs of QV-66 Nefertari and KV-17 Seti I of the Valley of the Kings, which were closed for 13 years, reopened to visitors in 2016. The daily quota of permits was further reduced to 150, while the ticket price was raised to 1,500 Egyptian pounds per person. Each tourist is allowed to stay inside for a maximum of 10 minutes, and photography is prohibited. Although the authorities have installed wooden floors inside the tomb to prevent tourists from raising dust and installed devices to take out the moisture. But there are still many experts who oppose the opening of the tomb. It cannot be ruled out that in the near future, QV-66 Nefertari tomb will be probably closed permanently and be displayed by virtual reality only, which will make the public never have the chance to witness this great art treasure on site again. In my opinion, if you could only visit one ancient Egyptian tomb in the west bank of Luxor, it must be QV-66, the tomb of Nefertari. Although the permit price is the highest among all Egyptian attractions, you will never regret your decision. Nefertari tomb was one of the last tombs I visited on the west bank of Luxor. Before this, I have visited most of the tombs known to be open in the Valley of the Kings, the Valley of the Queens, the tombs of nobles and the tomb of workers. Even the tomb of Seti I, which is as famous as the tomb of Nefertari and rarely visited by tourists, has been visited four times. As I am familiar with the art of tomb murals in the New Kingdom period, I do not think this tomb will bring me more shock than other tombs. If it weren't for the love poem of Ramses II, for she is the most beautiful woman alive. Just by passing, she has stolen away my heart. If not for the sake of admiring the beauty of Nefertari, I would think twice about paying for this expensive permit. Actually, before I enter the tomb chamber, I still doubt it in my mind if it's worth such investment. 
but the next second after I entered the tomb, all doubts vanished. I, who boasted that I had seen the world, couldn't help but say wow in my heart. Standing in front of these bright and colorful bar-leaf paintings that have passed through 32 centuries, I felt like a groom who just lifted the bride's hijab. After seeing the angelic appearance of the bride, mixed feelings of fascination, surprise, astonishing, panic and satisfaction flooded into my mind. The only difference is that I can only be with this bride for 10 minutes. Even though the guard kindly increased it to 20 minutes specially for me, I still felt like the time with it was being fast-forwarded. When Einstein explained the theory of relativity, he said this, let a man sit with a beautiful woman for an hour, and he will feel that only a minute has passed, but if he is asked to sit in front of a hot stove for a minute, he will feel that more than an hour has passed. In the tomb of Nefertari, you will deeply appreciate the essence of his saying. Ramses II once said to Nefertari, No one can make me pray for the next life except you. Nefertari is the love he wants to protect in this life and the next. And this tomb is the last and most gorgeous gift he presented to her. It was probably the most beautiful tomb on earth at that time. Even the Indian Taj Mahal from a later era, equally famous for its love and beautiful architecture, can't match it. For those lucky enough to witness this gift, the time inside is like a sweet dream that they would never want to wake up from. In this dream, you will accompany the great queen of the Ramses II on her journey to the afterlife. The stars on the ceiling of the burial chamber seem to be the incarnation of love in the world, traveling through 3,200 years of time, shining only for you to witness this peerless and beautiful love. Like Ramses II, you will involuntarily have an indescribable affection and longing for Nefertari. For she is the most beautiful woman alive. Just by passing, she has stolen away my heart. Let us promise to be together in this life and never forget our reunion in the next life. Most of the material wealth that accompanies our life is finally turned into one's own, and the spiritual wealth one's own will become an eternal beautiful memory. The time inside of the tomb of Nefertari belonged to the latter. Although it was short, I will never forget it. No matter when and where it is recalled, it will make people travel through time and space in an instant and reunite with those wonderful and warm moments. That's why I created this series of videos especially to share these wonderful moments with those who are connected. In the next episode, I will explain to you the structure inside QV66 and the sceneries along the way of the Queen's journey to the afterlife. Thank you for your attention. Please support original production. Welcome to like, repost, and comment.